Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. How do you stay married? Good question. <laughs> I know it's our 12th anniversary this year, and uh, that's something we obviously want to do is stay married for a, quite a long time. Yes, and yes. Uh, we definitely celebrate you know, every year. And I, I think in the beginning, I know for me, when we hit to the five-year mark, uh, I was just so relieved because I knew that most divorces happened before five years. I feel like that, that year we just really celebrated. We made it. Um, but a lot of our friends, they didn't make it. Uh, when we got married, we got married a little later in life. And by the time we were getting married, a lot of our, our, our peers were getting divorced. And that was, that was hard. That was really tough for us um, because people whose baby showers we'd gone to, people who we had celebrated with, people who had been in our wedding and, or us, we'd been in theirs, they were getting divorced. And it was just, it was a weight, it was heavy. And statistically, if you have friends who are getting divorced, um, you're at higher risk of divorce. And we, we, we really didn't know what to do. You know, we, we were at the time, we, we weren't involved in ministry in the way that we are now, but we were in ministry. And I worked for the diocese where we lived and we both together gave the marriage prep conferences. And even couples who presented at the marriage prep conferences with us, even some of them got divorced. And and that's when we realized marriage is hard. We know it's sort of a tough topic in that that's brought up why, you know, how, how can you stay married? But I think for us, at least our experience is that, uh, and our thought is that divorce is not really an option. It's, it's never not, been. It's, it's not something that we want because it's, it's not moving forward. We want to grow. We want to grow as people. And honestly, the best place to grow obviously it's God's vocation for you is within marriage. It's the ability to kind of correct and to all those those bad habits. And we don't want to give up. We don't want to just sort of get halfway there or get kids raised and give up. I know it's a we live in a world where sometimes people's words are not kind of trusted and having confidence in. But the couples that you will you will see today really give witness to that, that beautiful desire early on in engagement to, to find the right person, to stay committed the first years of marriage, and obviously as grandparents and older. It's a beautiful testimony, and it's something that we really need to pay very close attention to because it will bring hope during a time where maybe people think marriage is not as possible to do something for a long period of time. So thank you for being with us, and we're really excited about these conversations that will be taking place shortly. How can people just naturally say, we're just going to be moving together and we'll, we're going to make it? I can't. Without God, we can't. So that's my, my, my first answer. Recognize our, our weaknesses and invite God to feel them. We're both imperfect people. We have an imperfect love, so we need something perfect, like the love of God, to really uh, help us to love someone else appropriately and, and to love them well. We were both committed to the sacrament of marriage, the gift that God gave couples. And we were committed to that. So we said, well, well we're not certain, but we, we can trust God's plan for marriage. This 
decide to get married, um, there's staying married is the only option. I mean, there's no out. And uh, every day, get on your knees and pray for the graces of your sacrament of marriage. Everybody has ups and downs in their marriages. They have really tough things that happen in life um, that will really strain your marriage, will strain every bit of faithfulness and love you have to this person and to the point of breaking. But it's the grace of the sacrament that keeps you in the game and won't allow you to give up and gives you the courage, the perseverance, the fortitude to keep on going and to keep on trying. What you do before marriage is often carried into. So before marriage, like we, we had great communication skills. You know, we, we were able to do things together, have a good time. Uh, we did pray, but it was definitely not an area that was like our strongest. We'd, we'd say novenas and little things like that, but we didn't have like this consistent thing. So I could definitely say that like through marriage, uh, I could see prayer needing to be something that needs to be very strong. Like we're doing great, but we want to work on that because we know how important it is to keep God in the picture throughout marriage. Being self-reflective, always looking at what needs to be improved because we're always a work in progress. And to all those couples out there, like you always need to improve and we're always going to try and find that thing. And that's kind of what we're saying here is um, we have something we need to work on, we see it lacking, and we're going to work on it. Marriage is made up of two good forgivers. And so we said, okay, we can do that. So we are very quick to apologize to one another. Uh, and then we sort of brought that to our children, and they have become very quick forgivers too. So, you know, they always ask for forgiveness if they were disrespectful or something. And we found that that's very, very, very helpful to be a family of quick forgivers. In a culture and a time where it seems like so many people, at least appearingly, feel that, I don't know, they'll say 50% of marriages end in divorce, you know, uh, which I don't even know if it's correct or not, close. but close. But the reality is that God has a, obviously a better vision for that. So how do, you, how do you share with the next generation of marriages and young people today, how do you stay married? Well, um, there's two dimensions uh, in the dynamic of marriage. One is a natural and there's a supernatural. Cer certainly, if, I live, if we live our relationship just in the natural way, I, I don't see much hope. Uh, uh, there, there, there's, a, there's that supernatural element of, of, of the need to have God at the center of our relationship. What I mean by this is, for example, um, uh, as you know, we came both from broken families and, and the concern of or maybe the, the fear of, is this going to work? How's this gonna, how are we going to make it? Might have been a, a consideration at the beginning, but I remember, uh, and still today, the word divorce was not in the spectrum of possibilities for our relationship. On a natural, you know, a, a convinced way, this is not, this is not going to happen. However, I know myself very well and I know human nature enough that our natural capacities have a limit. And so recognizing my own, uh, one's own frailty in marriage, to me, is a first step for staying uh, uh, staying together. Because whenever we recognize our own weakness, then we call out to God. You know, there has been many times, and, in, in, in the, and from the beginning of our marriage, one particular incident, we were butting heads. Uh, we went to bed, we prayed, and in the morning, there, we, we kind of saw a, a third way. Where did this come from? And we were able to work it out. We saw that as the act of grace, as the act of God, as a result of the sacrament. And I thought to myself, how can people just naturally say, we're just going to be moving together and we're going to make it? I can't. Without God, we can't. So that's my, my, my first answer. Recognize our, our weaknesses and invite God to feel them. And when the priest at our wedding 
you know, I called on the Holy Spirit to bless our marriage. You know, we were getting the grace right there of the sacrament of marriage. And I think that's what we rely on when we when we butt heads and when we're both right, but we're not in agreement with each other. Like, goodness, what are we going to do? And we literally just say, we call on the grace of the sacrament of our marriage. And then sooner or later, usually sooner, uh, we get a very clear answer that was maybe different than what either of us had. But it was it's an answer that we just know came from the Lord and, and we can both be in agreement. You know, it is a mystery how we stay together. I mean, it might be a miracle, but it's possible if we're relying, if we're relying on the Lord. Um, we don't, we, we weren't sure when we got married. We had no certainty. We couldn't, with 100% certainty, say that this was going to work out. But we were both committed to the sacrament of marriage, the gift that God gave couples. And we were committed to that. So we said, well, well we're not certain, but we, we can trust God's plan for marriage. The, the divorce rate at five years after the wedding day is 25% for the general population. So one in four marriages will end in divorce at uh, five years after the wedding day. And that's, that's, that's sort of scary, I think, for a lot of couples to, to, to hear. Um, but, but what conversations have you had or kind of what maybe commitment or conversations has gone into like the, that we want to stay married? Mm -hmm. And what would you also share with other young, young people like, that are concerned about that? Yeah, that's a hard question. <laughs> it's a very hard question. And, and the only thing I could think about is, you know, starting even before you are, um, even before you start, I guess, dating or you're at the point of engagement, how important it is to your decision as to who you're dating, who you're going to marry. That's important to make sure that you are still on the same page. Uh, and y'all are in, kind of in the same boat, kind of wanting the same things. And I think that, you know, I don't know because I'm not married <laughs> yet, but I think that sometimes there's more of a fervor whenever you are married. You just, you're so excited. I guess you're still at the honeymoon phase and it's everything is just great. And I think I know that marriage is very difficult, you know, and sometimes it can be a cross. And I think that's where the idea of, commitment comes in that no matter what like whenever you exchange vows to realize that you know and hopefully you both are on the same page that no matter what like in sickness and in health we're going to stay together no matter what to make that decision and to make that um commitment and i think it's you know it's not so much like we're going to just white knuckle it and we're going to do this but that's where the the grace from the sacrament comes in as well to really um that's why we, you know, we should get married, but uh, to receive that grace and, and to allow God to be at the center of, of that relationship, I think. The only way the, we can do it with God mm -hmm. and without God, I, I think that's hard. It's hard, almost impossible. Yes, absolutely. Because like you said, like it's, it's almost impossible because we're two imperfect people, right? you know, trying to love each other well. We're both imperfect people. We have an imperfect love. So we need something perfect, like the love of God to really uh, help us to love someone else appropriately and, and to love them well. Decide to get married. Um, there's staying married is the only option. I mean, there's no out. And uh, every day, get on your knees and pray for the graces of your sacrament of marriage. Pray, you know, uh, for those graces. And and we've done that all through our marriage. Um, Can I ask you a question? What would you say is how would you say, you know, in 39 years of sacramental marriage, what what does grace, that grace of that sacrament look like? What does it feel like? How do you recognize it? It's being able to ride the tides. Mm -hmm. So everybody has ups and downs in their marriages. They have really tough things that happen in life um, that will really strain your marriage. 
will strain every bit of faithfulness and love you have to this person and to the point of breaking. But it's the grace of the sacrament that keeps you in the game and won't allow you to give up and gives you the courage, the perseverance, the fortitude to keep on going and to keep on trying. Um, he mentions that because we have a little tradition revolved around this. Um, a priest friend of ours, a long time ago, we were at his house and I noticed that he had a blessed crucifix on his bed and I asked him why he did that. He says, I pray for the graces every day for my priesthood and this is to, to protect my chastity. And I said, well, if he does that as a priest, we should be doing this as a married couple. So usually I make the bed in the morning and, and, we, and I take the crucifix after I make the bed and I place it uh, in the center of our bed towards the, you know, towards the foot part. And, uh, and, and I just beg for the graces of, of marriage. And I, and I usually end with, you know, God just help me to be the best father and husband that I can be. And then Cindy usually uh, takes it off at night and then, she, you know, she has... She and has I'll her. pray the same thing and that um, help me to love my husband and my children as you would have me love them. So without that, <laughs> it's very, very... Marriage is not easy. You know marriage is not easy and I don't know how we would do it otherwise. And one thing that I learned as a wife and a mother, maybe even too late, but it's never late, never too late, right? I learned it later in life, though, that the respect and the service that I give to him is huge. And it speaks volumes to our family, to our children, to our grandchildren. This is what they see. How do I speak to him in respect? How do I serve him in respect? How, do I, how am I kind to him? And then he, has, he just responds in love to all of that. And so if they witness this and see this, they are going to want that. Um, they are going to model that. So staying married for all these years, um, that's what I've learned in the last 39 years is better how to respect Glenn and to love him in that way and to support him. What you do before marriage is often carried into. So before marriage, like we, we had great communication skills. You know, we, we were able to do things together, have a good time. Uh, we did pray, but it was definitely not an area that was like our strongest. We'd, we'd say novenas and little things like that, but we didn't have like this consistent thing. So I could definitely say that like through marriage, uh, I could see prayer needing to be something that needs to be very strong. Like we're doing great, but we want to work on that because we know how important it is to keep God in the picture throughout marriage. And I, I think we know that it's important because we've seen it in our families. Um, I, what comes to mind for me is my, my grandparents, their constant fidelity to the rosary every day, every night. They pray it. Um, we'll pray it on Sunday dinners um, when the whole family's there and they're, they're persistent for de fidelity to that, I think has aided in their fidelity to each other, their fidelity to their family. Um, and it's something that we're working on. And I yeah. think... And same for, for my parents, you know, like they were very consistent about praying a rosary every night. And it's it's a beautiful like memory and, and thing that you can do together that you look back on from being a child and you're like, oh, that was a beautiful time. Like, I, I want to give that to my children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think this is kind of dancing around what the, the real answer is. And that's always being self-reflective, always looking at what needs to be improved because we're always a work in progress. And to all those couples out there, like, you always need to improve and we're always going to try and find that thing. And that's kind of what we're saying here is, um, we have something we need to work on, we see it lacking, and we're gonna work on it. It's understandable that there's a lot of anxiety because you're committing to something that you've probably never committed to that before. Like, as a young adult, what have I had to commit to that I'm projecting for the rest of my life? Um, and I think it boils down to trust, mm -hmm. uh, that we have to trust each other and we have to trust God and it's gonna work out. And there's, it's gonna be tough, but it's okay. It's a leap of faith, no, no matter what. And, and as long as you keep your priorities straight and you're fair to each other, 
you know, it, there's no way that God's not going to see that and help you get through whatever you need to get through. I think it was C.S. Lewis in his little book, The Four Loves, that said falling in love is something that happens to you. Staying in love is something that you make a decision to continue to work at and to do. And this is something today, I remember not too long ago, a politician was running for office and on his little card it said, happily married for five years. And that was pretty impressive to most of the constituents. However, uh, when you're uh, been, uh, uh, 40, 50, 60 years old, five years is not very impressive. We want to be able to, till death do we part. So how do you stay married? Well, uh, it's certainly something that we have to work at, just like how do I stay being a priest? Well, every morning when I get up, I have to offer my day and I have to recommit myself that I am a priest and I have given my life to God and I have to uh, accept it today and not look at what happened yesterday and not worry about tomorrow, but today I have to be faithful to my priestly vows. And so married couples have to do that. They have to continue to call to mind themselves uh, that they made this commitment. Also, it's very important, I think, is uh, in any friendship, friendship is work. And so marriage, this friendship of marriage to stay married, it means not to go to bed angry at one another. Uh, and the scriptures say, uh, do not let the devil, you see, uh, have a, a, a hand in your relationship. So uh, if you will be angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. So always kiss and make up, talk it out, but do not go to bed uh, until you resolve the issue. And so we have to talk it out. Relationships, we have conflicts. And married couples will, will certainly have conflicts. But to caress it, uh, to, to try to uh, listen to the other and spend more time trying to understand than to be understood. So this is a, a great help uh, to staying married. Another thing I learned from dealing with couples uh, who have had uh, difficulties in marriage and even separations and <laughs> uh, a couple of them that uh, actually civilly divorced and then they remarried again because they had never gotten uh, you know, a declaration of nullity. So uh, how did they do that? Well, they started doing a date night. They started to, uh, to, to put commitment to spending time with one another because the marriage vows first and foremost to one another and then only after the kids and everything else. So uh, continue to keep your marriage vows before you and caress the conflicts and don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And I think you'll be married for the rest of your life. This topic today of how do you stay married was something that really hits home for many of us, you know, our, our most married couples just because it's, it's, uh, it's possible to just have this anxiety about the future. And not just to stay married, but to be happily married. Uh, there are mm -hmm. so many couples that we've encountered that um, they're not best friends anymore. They are just individuals living under the same roof uh, who share children and uh, a house note. And uh, that's not what God is calling us to in the sacrament of marriage. He is calling us to an abundant life. Mentoring is one of the most important uh, aspects of thriving in your marriage that we can offer uh, for us. Uh, there have been couples in our life that, that we turn to, that we go to, that we seek advice from, that we look at. They witness to us what it looks like to have a healthy, happy, holy marriage. So if you don't have that couple in your life, it's one of the most important things that you can do to stay married. Find a mentor, uh, try to pray to together every single day as a couple, and be honest with each other, um, and seek that, that beautiful, true friendship and openness between you and your spouse. use media a lot in evangelization, so I believe in the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic TV, Catholics using the new media. Can I encourage everyone to watch Shalom TV? I think it's a great vehicle of evangelization. And God bless all of you.